Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about Femi Osafisan's play, Who's Afraid of Solarin? Osafisan is one of my favorite playwrights. He's easily top five favorite playwrights for me. Um, and part of the reason that I really like him so much, I mean, all of, all of his plays that I've read are fantastic, but Osafisan is one of the great adapters of contemporary theater. Not only great in the sense of he adapts regularly, like he, he, is, he is a prolific adapter of uh, ancient Greek drama, of uh, Russian drama, as we get in Who's Afraid of Solarin. Uh, he's adapted Shakespeare, as he does in his play We Sue Hamlet. Uh, he's adapted African folk tales. He's adapted all kinds of stuff. And Who's Afraid of Solarin? And, and the, so he's a prolific adapter, but he's also a really, really unique adapter in that he has a very distinct style and approach. Um, he makes the texts that he's working with, or the myth, myths that he's working with, the stories that he's working with, he makes them relevant to his own contemporary audience, which for, for the most part is a Nigerian audience, because he, so he's from Nigeria, and while a lot of his plays have had their premieres in uh, the UK or the US or elsewhere, a lot of his work premieres in Nigeria itself. And so he is writing for a Nigerian audience and for Nigerian concerns. So Who's Afraid of Solarin is one of his very early adaptations from 1978, which was pretty early in Osafisan's career. Um, and it is an adaptation of Nikolai Gogol's The Government Inspector, which I've done a video on and you should be seeing a link for up in the top corner. Um, I'd said that Osifisan is a unique adapter who takes materials and makes them relevant to his own uh, context. Who's Afraid of Solarin is sort of the exception to this. Sorry, we got sirens going by now. It's all. Who's Afraid of Solarin is sort of the exception to this in terms of his uh, adaptations of European drama. Uh, the plot line follows very, very closely on Gogol's plot line. There's not that much that changes. So uh, in this case, part, and part of the reason for that is that 1970s Nigeria had a major problem with corruption in much the same way that Tsarist Russia in the early 19th century had. Um, so in this play, you've got a number of local officials who get word that the government inspector Tai Solarin is coming. And Tai Solarin, incidentally, was a real person. He was a real government inspector uh, in Nigeria in the 70s. And he became famous because he could not be bought off. Uh, he was one of the few government officials who sought out corruption and genuinely tried to change it. And it's, I mean, it's clear between the play and a speech that Osafisan gave in memory of Solarin that he has tremendous respect for this man. So these corrupt officials in a small town in Nigeria get word that Solarin is coming and they start trying to figure out how they can cover up the evidence of their own corruption without actually having to give up being corrupt. Around the same time, a guy named uh, Isola uh, Oriabora comes to town and Oriabora is not Tai Solarin, but they mistake him for Solarin. Um, and so uh, Oriabora 
starts getting treated by these officials as though he's a major government figure and they start giving him money, they start paying his bills, they give him the best food, etc, etc. They take him around to show him all kinds of stuff. So almost across the board, the play follows what Gogol has done. With one major exception, which is that whereas in uh, Gogol's play, uh, the, the main character uh, does not figure out until almost the end, I think late in Act 4, that these corrupt officials uh, have mistaken him for the inspector, Oriadora uh, figures it out fairly quickly because he bribes a servant to tell him what it is that's going on and what it is that people think of him. And so what we have, whereas in uh, Gogol, this main character whose name escapes me at the moment, um, he kind of stumbles through getting all of these benefits. He stumbles through getting money because he's the sort of unwitting recipient of corruption. Whereas uh, Isola Oriadora, Oribora, um makes a sort of conscious choice that he's going to trick these officials into giving him as much stuff as he can get from them. And so here we have a very traditional figure of African literature, drama, myth, folktale, etc., etc. We have the trickster figure. So, um, Isola Oribora keeps this journal, which uh, sort of comes back to bite him later on when uh, he forgets it in uh, one of the official's houses and it's found by another official. But in his diary, at one point, he writes, they'll pay for it, the chairman and his comrades. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, the part I wanted to quote actually starts a little bit earlier. Uh, when they've, when the officials have sort of arranged to come and give him money without, in so many words, saying we're going to come give him money, he says, now to prepare to welcome them, my visitors, for I know night is their best time of call for all the intrigues that ruin in this nation and the machinations which break all our wasted young lives, but they'll pay for it, the chairman and his comrades. We've got another place where we have a sort of similar statement um, when the diary is being read out uh, to all of the, uh, the officials at the end, after Oyabora has made his escape, um, what the official who's reading at this moment, Baba Fulumi, uh, reads, they'll find the mistake costly. All the loot they've extracted from the poor citizens, I'm going to make them vomit. So, again, while most, while the plot line and the characters and all of this is very, very similar to what we have in Gogol's The Inspector General, or The Government Inspector, we have here a much more purposeful challenge to the corruption of these officials. Uh, Oriobora decides that he is going to uh, use their corruption against them, and teach them a lesson through their own greed. And that is, again, a very sort of traditional African approach in the use of the trickster figure as a way to punish uh, hubris, a way of punishing corruption, a way of punishing uh, whatever sort of negative uh, anti-social behavior the character encounters.